How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing always protect your profits and before i get started i want to let you guys know the silver membership for the discord which you get through patreon will expire at the end of the month so if you haven't had the opportunity to check it out i highly suggest you do so whether you're an investor or you're a trader you will be finding a lot of value in our private community plus you get direct access to me so let's talk about bbig so like i said in my previous video you're going to want to see some strength of it holding up the the $3 level. Of course, it ended up breaking through it and then testing around $2.53. And one thing we do know for a fact, there's a lot of interested buyers in this particular area. So going into tomorrow, I want to make sure you guys have a game plan, especially since we've seen the market pick up quite a bit towards the end of the day. I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you're a shareholder, or you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're going to go over is a technical analysis. We're going to be taking a look at the overall price action. We want to know support. We want to know resistance. We want to know what it looks like in a bearish case scenario and as well as in a bullish case scenario. And then we're going to go on Fintel taking a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information. The reason why this is important because it does have an impact on the way the stock performs. And then we're going to take a look at the order flow distribution. We want to know the buying and the selling behavior on the retail side and as well as on the institution side. And then when all of that is done, we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more details. So let's get to it. So we're going to do a technical analysis for BBIG. Let's see how it performed on the day. So it ended up closing at $2.93, being down 8.15%. On the low, it tested $2.53, and then on the high, testing $3.10. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 43.052 million shares, and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 106.1%. 6 million shares. So we did have well below the average in regards to volume, and it's part of the reasons why we saw a pullback in the stock. Now, when we take a look at our chart, which is the daily chart, we can see from the RSI down below, it is at 46.66. And then when we take a look at our moving averages here on the chart, we are below the 100-day, the 200-day, the 21-day EMA, and as well as the 50-day. So like I was saying in my previous video, a key area for BBIG to hold was the $3 level. It ended up breaking through $3 and seeing a low of $2.53. But one thing that was very clear, and we've pointed this out in previous videos as well, there's demand here. There's a lot of people that are willing to buy. There's proven areas of support as we've seen in the past. And this is why I'm not too surprised when we take into consideration what's happening after hours, we are above $3, being at around $3.02. So going into tomorrow, I want to see BBIG being able to get back into that $3 level. This will be very essential. Most preferably being above the 21 day EMA at $3.25 since we did see a high of the day at $3.10. If we're able to hold up above the 21 day EMA consolidate and we have market strength, this is where I'm going to be looking forward to seeing how well we move and we want to see us get to at least around $3.89 before we start seeing some resistance and then seeing how well we can go from there. Like I said, I like when BBIG stays above the 200 day moving average this tells us things get bullish and more people are willing to step in if we decide to trade under the three dollar level going into tomorrow this is where bbig doesn't look as strong but you're going to want to see areas of support hold up you wouldn't want to see us testing around 253 again instead you'd want to see a test maybe around 270 and seeing there's some support there so at least if we go into the next trading day then we could see increasing levels of support which could be a bullish sign so let's see how it performs going into tomorrow tomorrow. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for BBIG. So green rows indicate new positions while red rows indicate closed positions. So we're going to take a look at the recent filings. So we have National Bank of Canada that purchased 2,400 shares. We also have National Bank of Canada again that went in with puts of 3,824 shares and also here with calls at 3,800. So we know for sure they are hedging. And then we also have Goldman Sachs Group with 432,600 shares and Goldman Sachs Group again at 509,483 shares and these filings were on the 20th which we covered in the previous video as well and now when we take a look at the short interest 
The dark pool short volume ratio is at 42.86%. And then for the dark pool short volume, it is just over 16.42 million shares. Scrolling down further on the page, the short shares availability is at zero, updated 29 minutes ago. And then for the short ball fee rate, it's currently not available. When we take a look at the history of the short volume, we can see for the close of January the 20th, it was at 53.46. And then for the close of the 21st, it was at 42.86. So one thing that remains the same, BBIG does have short squeeze potential. So this is why there's a lot of volatility in the stock, and I can't wait to see what the numbers will be later on in the evening. Maybe if you see it beforehand, drop it down inside of the comments. So now let's move on to the order flow distribution. Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for BBIG. So we see here on the inflow, it was at 19.45, and then on the outflow, it's at 19.98. So we ended up having an outflow day, but it was still fairly close. Taking a look at the breakdown on the large, it was at 6.69 on the medium it was 9.74 and then on the small it was 3.02 taking a look at the outflow side on the large it was 7.47 on the medium it was 9.61 and then on the small it was 2.90 taking a look at the large scale orders in the last five days you could see for january the 24th which is today it being at negative of 0 0.77 million when we analyze the numbers even further Further for the small scale orders that tends to represent the retail side, we had more buying than we had selling. And then when we take a look at what happened on the medium, we had more buying than we had selling. And then when we take a look at what happened on the large, which represents whales, institutions, and funds, we had more selling than we had buying. And then when we take a look at the turnover ratio, it was at 44.61%. So you know what? This is actually good to see. We've been seeing this number go down consistently. We have seen it in the 200% range. We've seen it in the 100% range, the 90% range, the 60% range. Now seeing it at 44, what does this tell us? Yes, there's a lot of traders that are going in and out of this play, but there are also many who are holding on to their positions. And as we could see from the small scale orders that tends to represent the retail side, which is you and me, there's a lot of demand. Many people were buying up that dip when BBIG got down to the mid $2 range. So let's get into the final thoughts and we'll go over some more details as well. So for my final thoughts for BBIG. In regards to the price action, I know you can agree with me on this. We want to see it hold up the $3 level. This is very key. I saw inside of the after hours, it was doing a fairly good job, but we want to see a continuation of this going into tomorrow. Most preferably, I would want to see it actually pick up to the 21 day EMA around $3.25, and then we gain some momentum from there. If BBIG decides to keep trading below $3, this is where we start seeing some weakness here. The last thing that we want is us testing back two dollars and fifty cents instead you want to see a higher low going into tomorrow so a higher low you'd want to look for maybe if we could test around 270 that'd be a good look and then get us ready slowly for that next move up also when we went on fintel taking a look at the recent institutional ownership and the short interest information it does continue to have short squeeze potential and we do see it has been showing interest on the institutional side as well even though we did have an outflow day for institutional orders one thing we saw there was was demand on the retail side. So this continues to bring a lot of volatility inside of the stock and why I emphasize you want to have a game plan. And if you are going to be jumping in it without even taking a look at the price action, please consider risk management. Use a stop loss. The last thing that you want to do is be left holding the bag, waiting for days on end for that stock to turn around. And if it doesn't turn around, then you end up missing out on other opportunities, plus you lose money as well. And that is one thing that I don't want you to go through. You want to make sure that you're using great habits. I know I sound like a broken record when I do these videos, but I keep hearing these stories. Hey, Dre, I bought in at five. Again, FOMO is not a great habit to have, and I want you to get rid of it, especially for 2022. There's going to be so many plays that are going to be coming into the market. Remember, we are only only in January. And if you need help getting into plays, whether you're a trader or you're an investor, then of course you should join us in the Discord and you can find that link down in the description and we'll be happy to have you. Like I said, the silver membership expires at the end of this month. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll be talking real soon.